Do you want to do the welcome? <laughs> I can do the welcome. Well, I just want to say good morning to everybody. We are up and running for church in the living room, uh, just like, you know, old school. So we just want to welcome you, and uh, whatever time of day you're watching this, I hope it will bring you a sense of just communion and fellowship with uh, us and with the Lord as we uh, go ahead and put out something for you. Good enough. <clears throat> few announcements we always do announcements we're not six here feet apart. we're not six feet apart Sorry, I'm wrecking roll maybe that's bit. okay <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, a few announcements <laughs> we're not meeting for church today uh, as you have already realized uh, you know but we are having to look at what we're going to do through this time of the next we don't know how long few weeks a month um, uh, we still have a responsibility to uh, the church family and to the community. Um, so we're looking at how to best accomplish that. And, and many of you, those of you part of the church, got a phone call this week. Uh, just we're trying to um, determine the best way to contact, the best way to stay in touch. So uh, you, most of you got a call about what is your correct email address? What is... Um, uh, are you hooked on Facebook? Are you on Facebook? Most of our Nothing. communication or a lot of our communication will be via our Facebook page. So if you are not, um, if you have not followed or liked our Facebook page, please do so. It's um, GBC Silver Lakes. So just search GBC Silver Lakes. That'll bring it to you. We'll do a lot of our updates there. 
Uh, for those who are not on Facebook, we are looking at email and phone calls if that's what we come down to. So uh, please make sure that we have your correct information. You can call the church office, even if no one's there, and leave a message and we'll get that. Um, we do intend to be in the office uh, a couple days this week. Not exactly sure how that's going to work, but uh, you can call the office and uh, and see what the status we'll check is. Messages on that machine we will too. be checking messages on that machine. Now, if you have kids that are in our normally in our uh, children's ministry program, there's a Facebook page for them as well. Um, Grace Bible Church Kids. So go to Facebook, search that, and it should bring it up. We will be sending out materials for uh, parents to actually work through a lot of the lessons with their kids um, and some uh, little videos for them and, and a number of things. So if you like that page, uh, we'll keep in touch with you over that. And um, also for youth, there is GBC Students. Um, so go ahead and, uh, and, and look into those and we'll be doing updates through that area and keeping you posted on how we are still ministering within this odd situation. Okay, and at this point in the service, we would normally, I would say this, which I'm going to say. Um, Good morning. We will continue in worship with our offering. And, and it is important to understand that this is a part of worship. Yeah. You know, sometimes people think, well, you're just trying to keep the lights on at the church. And while there is a reality to that, it's more than that. The uh, What we give as an offering to God is not so much about God, I'm, God doesn't need our money. I think it's about shaping us into the kind of people God would like us to be, a generous people. I mean, we teach our kids at an early age, don't be stingy, be generous, share. And that is a characteristic of who God is. And so our offering is largely for that purpose. It's teaching us to trust in God, teaching us to be a generous people willing to meet the needs that others have. But that's a little difficult. I can't really pass you a plate right here or an offering bag. And so people have asked how we're going to do this. Um, the majority of what we're going to do will be online as everything else. We have online giving. If you go to our website, there is a tab you can click on where it says give, and it will take you to our giving portal uh, where you can set up an account and give through that means. And the um, website is gbcsl.com. The website is gbcsl.com. Um, the easiest way to do this is what Julie and I do. We just use our bill pay service. And every month, beginning of the month, you know, click on that thing. It says send a check to Grace Bible Church. That's probably the easiest way for a lot of you who are already using bill pay is just set us up as one of your regular um, disbursements. If you need help setting up, if you want to use the website giving and you need help with that, call the office. We'll make that work. We'll find a way through that. And if we need to, we'll look at other options as well. Um, but this is an important part of what we do. It's something God calls us to do and something that really makes a difference. A key element is, is to remember that we're not giving to Grace Bible Church. We're giving through Grace Bible Church because as part of our ministries, that we support around the world. There are, there, these funds go in many different directions and support many organizations that will really make a difference in the lives of people who are struggling in different ways. As a matter of fact, we're part of the Evangelical Free Churches of America, and our REACH Global organization uh, has a crisis response team who has already kicked into high gear because of this mm -hmm. pandemic, and I've been getting emails for what they're organizing and how they're reaching out and making a difference. So... Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and pray for the offering. Uh, we're going to do another song and then share some things with you. So let me pray. Lord, we thank you for the faithfulness of your people. We thank you that you use us to reach out into a world that is frightened, hurting, um, discouraged, and maybe hopeless. And we pray, Lord, that through our generosity that we can make a difference in those areas, a difference in the lives of people who need encouragement. We thank you for this opportunity, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
time to sing your song again Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Sing it out Oh bless the talk about today. You know what? Let me change this around. What I want to talk about today, you know, this is a kind of an unprecedented time. We've not dealt with anything quite like this in my lifetime. And I think it is being um, discouraging for a lot of people. Uh, there's so much uncertainty and we're not really sure how to process it all. Um, but the thing is, we don't need to be afraid. We don't need to, um, have those concerns. It's very natural to be upset about this, but there can be peace in the midst of troubling times. Actually, I've got a troubling time myself, myself this morning. I uh, worked on what I was going to say and I was going to have it all ready for you. And I woke up this morning and I opened up my computer to just go over and it was gone. All my prep, 
everything I had worked out and I'm going to do this here and I'm going to talk about this and it's gone. Had a little bit of the introduction left. I don't know what happened. My computer was being weird yesterday. But uh, talk about unexpected and stressful. Uh, that hit me. A little bit of anxiety. You know, how are we going to make this work? So I made some quick notes and I'm going to be winging it to some extent. Uh, but, you know, I trust God to make that work. You know, it is it is so weird. That I, don't, I don't think that I've ever seen the world. I've never seen the world change so quickly as what we've seen in the past week. It's been like a storm. It's like there's clouds gathering and you, you notice up there, you don't know what's going to happen. And all of a sudden the storm hits. And, and so regarding this, there were clouds a couple of weeks ago, but then all of a sudden, boom, um, in about a week, our lives are dramatically different. Last Sunday, we met at the church and I mentioned that there were no confirmed cases in San Bernardino County. Well, in the course of a week now, there's 10 and likely to rise from that. So there is a certain amount of anxiety for people. But we don't need to have that. We can find peace in the midst of this uh, storm. You know, Jesus promised that in, on the night before he was crucified, just hours away from the cross, he said this to his followers. He said, I'm leaving you a gift, a gift of peace, peace of mind and heart. And the peace that I give is a gift that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. I think that applies to us today. We don't need to be troubled. We don't need to be afraid. Peace is available to us. Peace of mind and heart. And so that's what I want to talk about here for the next few minutes. You know, generally, I think most of us are creatures of routine. We, uh, some of us might say we like change, but we like change within um, a structure. We want small changes. We don't want an upending of the entire social system and and uh, the entire world, you know, we, we want to have a sense of confidence about the future that's important to us and that there will be systems and structures that we can depend upon. And I think even those who say they like change, they like a little bit of change within the context of a, a system of great stability. But you know what? All that's gone. We don't have that right now. The world has changed drastically and it may never be the same again. For example, I heard a couple of reports about how, depending on how long this lasts, um, there may only be a few retailers left at the end of this because businesses are having a hard time going out of business. And, you know, Amazon, Costco, and Walmart may be the ones who survive. We don't know. We just don't know. The world will have changed and everything's uncertain. No one knows what the future holds. Are jobs going to come back? Will the stock market bounce back? Uh, what's going to happen with housing prices? Will grocery stores get back to normal? You know, and, and maybe even closer to home, will I or someone that I love test positive? And if so, will that be fatal? What's going to happen to my kids? What's going to happen to my parents? No one knows. The future is uncertain and unknown. Of course, that's always been true. There, there have always been many things that can change our future in the blink of an eye. You know, medical issues have always been here. Cancer diagnosis means life will never be the same. Heart disease, kidney disease, any number of things. And then there's, there's things like accidents. You know, a car crosses a double yellow and hits you head on and everything is unknown. Will you even survive? And how long will it take to recover? And was there any brain injury? You know, is, is a broken back or a shattered pelvis? Will you walk again? Life is always uncertain. We never know the future. And the difference right now is that a lot more of us are conscious of that. So we're concerned and we're fearful and we're anxious and maybe having trouble sleeping, I've heard from people. And I, this could even bring up things from our past that we've never really dealt with. So there's my introduction. Do you feel better yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> Nothing new here. We're always at risk, but we feel it a little more. We wonder why this has to be. You know, why is the world like this? Why can't we just be at peace and why can't we be content and why can't we be undisturbed and why can't we be happy because there's so many things that come at us from so many different directions this is just one but the thing is the bible tells us that the bible starts with that reason of why the world is this way and the fact is that we we defy god and the world is the way it is 
And I compare it to this. I think of, actually, this happened at the church last year. There's a toddler about two, two and a half. And mom looked away for a second, and the kid's off running around behind the building. And she called him, you come back here. And he turned to look at her, got even more determined, and those chubby little legs were running as fast as he could away from mom. That's what we do with God. We run away. And, and the fact is, think how frightened that child would be if something unexpected happened, something out of his control. Um, it would have been terrible. And so mom had to chase him down and bring him back because he is safe only with his parents. And it's the same with us. That's how we deal with anxiety and fear and things like that. We trust God. We stop running away from him. You know, the world is a mess. It's no secret. People wonder why. Why doesn't God do something? But God is doing something. God has a plan to fix this world, and he starts by fixing us, by changing us. As we stop running away and turn back to him. But that's our choice. The world is a mess, but the miracle is that God can give peace right in the middle of the mess. And that is part of fixing us, fixing the brokenness that is in us. I'll tell you a story about someone who experienced that. You know, things seem out of control right now. And uh, they are. We don't have control over what's going on individually. Uh, we can't stop. None of us by ourselves can stop this um, virus. Um, but I want to tell you a story about a woman who was also in a situation that was out of her control. Her name was Corrie Ten Boom. She lived in the Netherlands in World War II era. And she and her family, her father, brother, and uh, sister, uh, and some extended family were uh, devout Christians. And when the Nazis invaded their country, they decided they had to help the Jews as the Nazis were rounding Jews up. And they said, we have to do something. So they had a secret room constructed in their house and they were taking in Jews and hiding them from the Nazis and eventually smuggling them out of the country uh, with an underground uh, organization. But they were caught. Um, they were raided by the Gestapo one day. The secret room worked. They didn't find any of the Jews who were staying there, any of the underground workers. But the family was uh, detained and actually taken off into custody um, a couple were released, released pretty quickly, but Corey, her sister Betsy, and her father were detained. Um, and a few days later, her father, who was elderly, not in the best of health, he died in Nazi custody. But Corey and her sister Betsy were sent to uh, a political concentration camp. Shortly after that, they were sent to a labor camp in Germany. And they were there for some time, and it was brutal condition. She wrote a book about this called The Hiding Place, if you've never heard of it. And it's, it's an amazing book. Uh, because in that prison, in that concentration camp, as they were open to what God was doing and how God was working in that situation, there were just amazing things. Uh, their insight, their peace in the midst of that situation was incredible. And uh, before they were released... Betsy died. Corey's much-loved sister died. And one of the last things Betsy said was, there is no pit so deep that God is not deeper still. She was laying in a bed facing death. And her statement was one of hope and peace. Betsy died. Uh, maybe two weeks later, Corey was released. And she found out later that her release had been a mistake. It was a clerical error. And a week later, she found out that all the women in her age group were sent to the gas chambers. And Corey, over the following years, uh, became a well-known speaker, talking about her experiences, talking about how God was with her in the midst of an incredibly uh, difficult situation. And she made this statement, which I think applies to us today. If we take this to heart, it really makes a difference. She said, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. She had an impact on millions with her story. But the key of that, the key word of that uh, statement is a known God. We have to know God. We have to 
uh, have a familiarity with who he is and what his interaction with us is and and how we need to respond to situations and know that we can trust him like a child can trust a parent. Corey understood that. She understood what Jesus said. This is in the book of John, by the way, chapter 14, verse 27, when Jesus said to his followers, to those who had committed themselves to him, he said, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. We won't find this in any other area. This is a supernatural peace, a supernatural uh, sense of God's presence, peace of mind and peace of heart. And so Jesus continued, don't be troubled or afraid. And there's a, a significance to that too, because Jesus seems to think it's a choice. We have the choice of whether we are going to be troubled, whether we are going to be afraid. So don't be. Put your faith in God. And a couple minutes later in that same conversation, as Judas was coming to betray him, Jesus said this to his disciples. This is in John 16. He said, the time is coming. Indeed, it is already here. When you will be scattered, each will go his own way and leave me alone. And moments later, that, was, uh, that came true as, as uh, soldiers came up and the disciples ran off and Jesus was arrested. He said, you'll leave me alone, but I am not alone because the Father is with me. We're never alone when we have that alignment with God. And Jesus was able to face the cross a mere hours later because of his understanding of that. So he continues to the disciples and he says, I've told you all this. I've explained everything that's happening for one reason, so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you're going to have many trials, many sorrows. Things are going to be difficult. Things are going to be challenging. But take heart. Be of good courage because I have overcome the world. That's the promise that Jesus makes to us. I think we can access that peace that he's talking about, peace in him, because he has overcome this world. We are facing difficult times, but things are not out of control. God is with us through these times and can bring us peace. When we understand that security like a, like a child who stops running and returns to his parents, uh, that peace and that ultimate safety are available. Um, so this is easy to process. Maybe hard to do sometimes, but easy to understand. And it just starts with a prayer. It starts with a, a desire in your heart to return to God. Listen to what he says, do what he says. His interest is protecting us, guarding us, caring for us and we just have to stop running away and come back and allow him to give us his peace so that's where it starts with our desire to stop running and return to our heavenly father and then we pray and we just say this god help me to trust you help me to trust you help me to follow you help me to stay with you and relieve my peace, or uh, fill me with your peace. And with that, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for um, your care for us, that we're not left here alone, that you're with us, that you have uh, set up your word to tell us what to do, tell us who you are, and let us know that you can be trusted, and that we are safe, when we turn to you, that you care for us in every way. So Lord, help me to trust, help me to follow, relieve my fear, and my anxiety. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, we got one more song we want to do. This is uh, a song about God being in control. That's why we can trust him is because he's in control of the situation. And we don't have to worry. He cares for us, and he'll bring us through it. Yeah. All my shepherds, I have no need. You lead me by the peaceful streams, and you refresh. my head. 
to heart and let it ease the anxiety and the tension turn your eyes to god uh, we will be contacting you this week watch our facebook page um, we want to maintain contact in whatever way we can we're working on uh things this week for our services next week we're looking at communion in two weeks so um we'll be in touch god bless thanks for watching Bye.